Hey, this is the Echo Cast, episode 15. I am Bond Diesel. Welcome to new and old listeners. We are looking at some exciting stuff this week. Not much in the way of news, but we'll talk about it. This week has been an interesting one for me. As of the recording of the last entry, I had a little scratch on my leg and for anyone who saw the awful Twitter post I made that I think lost me about 20 followers, uh, that spread into a condition on my leg, which I can only describe as it almost falling off. But I'm doing okay. We'll make it through. First up, let's talk about a little bit of content update. The giveaway has begun for the Division 2 art print. These things were only for sale at E3 this year in the Ubisoft booth. I grabbed two of them with the intent of giving one away. And to the chagrin of Taylor and Uber Timmy, since I told everyone when I bought them I would give one away, couldn't give it to them, sell it to them. They had some issues getting them because of some some messaging and, and stuff, but you know, I'll, I'll wish them luck in winning it in a normal way and or getting a hold of one via other, other ways. Uh, the print is a, I believe, 12 by 14 inch white art print. Um, it's the division, it's like the shade, it's like a star in orange that's over the uh, Lincoln, the Lincoln Memorial. In DC it's really really cool um, it looks cool the, the rarity of them makes me even better so um, I will post those links in the relevant places the best place to see it is probably in my Twitter and uh, you may see some people retweeting it and such uh, there's 15 20 ways to enter I believe um, there is a big giant bonus for anyone who subs me on Twitch um, the Twitch Prime does count for that. Uh, it's kind of a cheap way to get subs, but um, for the potential prize, I, I would say it's worth it, and maybe you'll even find someone you enjoy hanging out with. Beyond that, I put out a new specialization speculation last week for the XM25 grenade launcher. Be sure to check that out on YouTube. It's received uh, fairly positive uh, reviews. Um, I have another one that I will be posting this week. That will be a hand cannon. If you've uh, seen the preview image I posted. You'll probably know which one it is, but uh, I would I would suggest checking the video out and hearing some of my ideas on uh, skill tree breakdowns for something like that. A different type of specializations within a, spec a specialization. When it comes to the stream, I've been fooling around a little bit with PvP. Um, I'm considering doing a mixer night and doing maybe a PC night as well. Um, maybe on Fridays or Saturdays or uh, we'll see. Um, the PvP has actually been a lot of fun. On Xbox, I've been playing Last Stand and Skirmish. Um, and I was worried it was just going to be literally whole teams of Striker everywhere. Um, and it's not. Um, it's a lot of different stuff. It's a lot more sniper builds than I expected in a good way. There's definitely Pred, Striker, and they're a little annoying. Um, but you have to counter them, you know. And um, the time to kill is a little better than I expected, I guess because of the normalization. Um, I've been actually running a, like a Hexo build. Um, and I know it's not ideal, but I've still been having a lot of fun with it, so... Yeah, I've been doing some of that stuff. I plan to keep doing that. It's um, been a good time. I st still don't really want to dive into the whole DZ thing. It's just I I don't I don't know. I may do like a survival series in the DZ of kind of given maybe doing a video of some hints things like that and how you can 
know, go in the DZ as a solo PVE player and enjoy it and farm and get some decent gear and, and not be so angry if you do get ganked. Um, and the last bit of content update, um, I'm actually um, tinkering and thinking up a video to talk about what I think the hunters will be in Division 2. Um, I've already started kind of an outline of what I want to do with that. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see where that goes. Uh, we do have a state of the game recap to do. Um, we did have a, you know, a decent little state of the game this week. Nothing huge, but it was nice to see the guys again. Um, they said that the next shields will be out this month, but they didn't have an exact date. They pointed out that that countdown that's in the game, which would be this coming Friday, may not be accurate. They couldn't confirm or deny that at this point. Um, Hamish told a very short version of the story of what happened at E3 and with the stream and customs holding up equipment and internet not working and all kinds of last minute cancellations and stuff. Um, it's, it's kind of a cool little snippet of what happened and maybe one day we'll get the whole story. I, he, I think he mentioned doing a, uh, a podcast about the intricacies of the whole situation, which even as someone who was there, we didn't, at least I didn't hear much about it. So I, I would be very interested in learning um, how exactly crazy that all was and how cool it was that they ended up still doing, I think, 12 of the 14 hours of streaming they, they planned on. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, they did announce that uh, currently, as I speak, there's a double field proficiency uh, cash weekend going on. So if you have your um, increased kill XP builds ready to go, you can get tons of field proficiency caches. A good way to get some Phoenix credits. And those drop exotics and classy gear at a fairly decent rate. So get in there, knock that out. Uh, even though more than likely by the time you hear this, it's going to be over. But they do these fairly often. So be on the lookout for the next one. If you look up Wook Plays on YouTube, he um, has a nice little build breakdown of how to get 100% extra kill XP, which uh, basically doubles the number of caches that you can get. Uh, and the last bit is that the global event assault, I believe, begins this month. Um, they didn't give an exact date, but more than likely it'll be towards the end of the month, the way the outbreak was last month. Uh, and it should be the same sets as last time um, when they ran it, um, which I don't remember off the top of my head, but that information should be fairly easy to find. They did point out that um, this kind of begins the season of all of uh, the, the the Swedish super long awesome vacations uh, that they ma get mandatory um, I know a few of the people I interact with are going to be off for three to four weeks starting in the next week or two so um, I wouldn't suspect uh, that we will have a stay of the game for a while not a not a not one as we know them currently I will say that the one nice thing about this is I highly suspect that when most of these people's vacations are wrapping up uh, in about, you know, six to eight weeks. Um, I, I imagine that the, that the agenda is that that's when things really start getting serious with releasing division two information and, and really getting on that grind because I know it seems like division two is a long ways away, but if you, if you look up, you know, how game development works and all that, and if you think about marketing campaigns and such, that that's all going to start relatively soon. Um, and I and I do think that GamesCon in August will probably be the kickoff of that. But we'll have to wait and see. When it comes to Division news, um, honestly, I didn't have anything of note to really go over. Um, I'll use this spot to kind of make a comment about um, you know some of the controversy over the the E3 agent statue and um, some, some interesting interactions going on with that. Uh, I, I, you know, that, that whole situation has been blown out as they tend to be. Um, there, there were panels on there that were meant for creators that they picked handpicked, whether those people played for two weeks and never touched the game again, or there were star players who got on. If you were just, just for being a star player, or just people they wanted to put on there. It you know was really their choice. 
as well as a bunch of panels um, that were meant for the random people from the beta signups. I don't think people realize that there's 10 plus panels. Um, those were removable on that statue. They, they, they would take them off and put them in a display as they were completed. So there weren't just three panels that only certain people got put on. Um, there were tons of them where hundreds of names are put on there. Um, it's, it's just a dumb thing to get all up, up in arms about at this point. It's, there's so many more important things to worry about when it comes to the division two or just like, I don't know, life in general. Um, I made the statement that I will not delete. I, at this point, since I've been doing content creation, haven't said anything I regret. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I'm going to try to make a focus on not worrying so much about trolls and clickbait and trying to correct everyone. Um, if anyone knows me in real life, they know that that's just kind of the person I am. I feel like if there's something that's inaccurate, it needs to be corrected. Um, but I'm realizing more and more that if I just focus on what I'm doing and doing my thing, uh, that that's really for the best and, um, getting involved in petty arguments with people who want that is, uh, is not, it's, it doesn't help anybody. So I'm not perfect. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm not always going to, uh, do everything perfectly. I will be a hypocrite at times, but, um, I do intend and want to be better. That said, I do want to take a moment to encourage people to go check out the subreddit. If you're a Reddit user, um, the subreddit for division was the first interaction I had with the community. And honestly, the only interaction I had with the community up until about summer of 17, uh, almost a year and a half into the game. Um, I didn't realize that Twitter and Twitch were so big. I actually kind of shunned those two mediums. I thought they were dumb. Look at me a year later. Um, that subreddit's been, in, um, been rough at times especially about a year ago. And so if people were turned off from their subreddit, I understand, but Joker unique has done an incredible job. Um, continuing on with that project. And it seems like with the influx of new players and the game improving, um, the, the attitude over there is really, really cool. There's still a few turds. It's going to happen. Um, but I've definitely noticed that a lot of the really trolly negativity there gets shunned pretty quickly. Um, and, and creators and stuff who kind of made a living off of being negative on there um, aren't as well received as they were at one point. And it seems like overall the people there legitimately just want to talk about stuff that matters. Um, so I suggest giving it another chance. The more good people in there, giving good information, it, it seems like a lot of new players pop in there asking for help. And the more good people from the community in there giving help as they can, the better. Um, and and that's, a, that's a resource that to be very, very good for people when the division two comes out. So I suggest checking out the, the division, um, subreddit on Reddit, give it a shot. It's better than it used to be. Jerk unique has done an incredible job with that place. On to the speculation part of the show, the, the real meat and potatoes, I believe as Tinks put it on the bombshell jackets, uh, podcast this week, a uh, big shout out to them and sit rep. I've, um, been highly inspired by both of their podcasts. They're awesome. I can only hope to one day be half as good as they are um, and half as entertaining. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're not listening to theirs, you're honestly making a mistake. And you should go follow them and check them out. They're everywhere. For this week, I wanted to talk about what I think we may get out of community features in Division 2. Um, and, and specifically, obviously clans, raids, world events, stuff like that comes up, but even talking about the DZ, um, and just like common areas and stuff. So I'll start with the, with clans clans. I think they've been talked about and people are excited about them. Um, but I really don't entirely think people are, um, I don't think people are understanding how big of a difference that could make um, 
a, a bit of a bummer that I think we've already found out is that um, there's been multiple, uh, I believe, official statements saying that there's currently no app, no no mobile app in pro in process or or being made for the Division Two. I think most people expected that because there was hints of that in the first game, and there's so many things in the second game that are kind of fulfilling ideas we had in the first one. Um, the the lack of um, of an app is is kind of a bummer. Um, I honestly didn't really care that much about no app, in the sense of uh, gear management. Good lord, not the drone, please no. The the actual the one thing I really wanted the app for was um, for clan and clan management. Um, I thought that would be a perfect mix. But it doesn't seem that that's going to happen, at least not at the start. Um, it'd be really cool if though they they allow um, they release an API to allow people to make their own apps um, to maybe do some of that those things. But we'll have to see. What I do think is essential though is a website where you can manage um, your your clan. Um, you know these clans could be taken really seriously and. If there's any competitive scene in the game, the clans could be really huge. Um, if if raids are as good as we all hope they will be and as they're kind of being talked about, the clans will be a big deal to have people that you can trust um, and that are experienced in the game and that you know to do the raids with if they're as challenging as they are hyping them up to be. And doing all of that management and, and having a serious clan system in the game that you have to completely manage through the game. I mean, I'm sure it'd be fine. I, I have faith that they can make it something that's awesome. But having that ability to manage your clans um, through a website, uh, to me, is a big deal. Um, it, it Kind of akin to the old Battlefield 4 system. I remember that being a nice little system. Um, and, and I'm really, really hoping that that is, is a thing. I and mean, then lastly with the clans, um, one idea from Destiny I've, I've really enjoyed, Destiny 2, in the short time I played it, was the, the clan rewards. So you, know, you, could, you could not be even playing and pop in and find that you have some caches or something because of the activities that the rest of the people in your clan have been doing. Um, I think that's great. That's a really cool it's an incentive to be part of a group. It's an incentive to be part of an active group, which is a pretty big deal in my opinion. Um... I, I really hope we see something like that, and I think we will. Um, things like hopefully we can use custom logos. It, obviously, it looks like we have we can have custom clan tags, which is great. We'll have to see what the limits are on that. Even just for myself, I've been considering like, well, you know, should I should I start thinking up if I would want to make my own clan? Um, would I want to join someone else's? Which is what I'm probably gonna do. Um, can you be in multiple? Because in that case, I'll definitely have my own, but then also be a part of other people's. Or do you have to pick one? Um, we'll, we'll have to see. I'm really curious. Um, that's an exciting part of the game that obviously we're all excited about learning more about the DZ, PvP, in-game activities, the story, guns, enemies, like all that stuff is super interesting. But for the long-term life of the game, getting more information about the clan system and the clan system being deep and useful um, could be really important for the longevity of Division 2. So we'll have to see. Uh, raids are a thing that, um, you know, besides the, the actual raid mechanics and how they're going to make the raids work, which I don't think anyone really knows yet, um, making those community activities, making those ways for people to get good gear and um, or to get better gear. I... I really hope, and it seems like they're going on the idea that raids aren't meant for people to hit level 30 or whatever the cap is going to be and just jump in and just do them. The way that, I mean, even incursions and heroics right now, like, you can basically do that, you know. Maybe not exactly, but but it's 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 not that challenging. Um, and the actual missions, the mechanics in them and stuff are, are relatively simple and, and you, know, you don't you know, have to really coordinate too much. Um, if you watch someone do a destiny raid or something like that, you know, those, those take a significant amount of coordination and communication. 
Um, and compared to what we currently have in the division, it just isn't that. So I really hope we see that as a community thing. Um, and even that one little interesting thing I've thought about is that um, the raids with like a global event type system. So the raid itself could already be extremely challenging, but then you can stack modifiers on top of it and make it even more challenging. Uh, it'd be really, really cool to see. The last thing with the raids is the way that Destiny does like the, the worlds first, um, where there's basically a competition as soon as the raid drops to see what team on what platform can finish the raid first with proof um, and then get some fairly big accolades for doing so. That would be so freaking cool, man. Uh, I, I don't think I'm a good enough player to ever be a part of that kind of a thing, but that hype and that excitement on Twitch, Twitter, everywhere, just even with people who don't engage in social media that much, that 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 idea is so freaking cool, and I and I really hope that they they do something like that. I've heard a lot of talk about world events, kind of like what Destiny has. I'm gonna be talking a lot about Destiny here, obviously. Um, the the common areas in Destiny um, have you know other players running around and stuff like that. Those world events, when I messed around with them, they they were a neat idea, but I don't know. I just don't know if we're going to have that kind of like a light zone where we're going to have so many people running around in it. Um, but but again, that that's a thing where um, I think that'd be really cool. And, and, and somewhere where I do think that may be plausible and could be really interesting is in the DZ. If there was a world type event, like you know, kind of like the contamination events right now, but maybe even bigger where it's not just some cleaner bosses down in the underground, but it's a, a, another Colonel Bliss helicopter rolls in and, you know, everyone in the DZ has some incentive to go try to take this event down um, and, and maybe go rogue or maybe not, you know, maybe work with other people. Um, the, the DZ is an interesting place um, for me with a division two when it comes to community features and, and community building, because I've said it before, but with a DZ, I really, really hope that the Division 2 has game modes like Skirmish or Last Stand that are so feature rich and maybe have private servers. And I really want some side PvP modes to be the go to place for competitive PvP for the people who want that. Because if that's available, I think that will make the regular DZ more of what was originally intended to be a community space where people maybe work together or maybe screw each other over instead of right now where for the most part, all you do is screw other people over. That's all that's left for some people. Um, and I think it's because while I just gave last stand and skirmish a lot of credit for being better than I expected, there's still very basic game modes and, and not perfect game modes in any way, shape or form when it comes to satisfying that competitive um, PVP that people want out of this game and they go to the DZ to find whether it's actually there or not I think is arguable but that's for a different podcast the last bit is I'm just kind of curious to what the common areas are going to be I think we can assume the DZ will be a common area of some some type um, but in the current game we have the safe houses the the hub and uh, the terminal and those are great um I don't think they're really used for matchmaking and stuff as much as people, maybe they're originally intended. They're mostly just to see other people. For me, I just like occasionally seeing someone I recognize in there. Um, it's, it's interesting. I, I, I actually don't want the LZ to be some big giant community area. I, I want that to be mine and whoever I choose to bring into it. Um, but my opinion is only that. It's only my opinion. Um, and I'm really curious to see uh, what they do with that. And I am happy to be proven wrong if they do something different um, or maybe even make it where you can choose for it to be a public space or not. Um, rather than this PBE DZ everyone wants, maybe we could have an LZ that is populated with up to 24 people um, that you can work with. Um, it wouldn't be, you know, DZ. You wouldn't go rogue on them. Or you can just choose to be in your own LZ. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm really excited for the community features in this next game and 
I think the inclusion of clans and doing the raids and stuff um, is is hopefully a really good sign that they'll be pushing the boundaries and, and pushing the the community side of the game a lot further than they did in Division One. Uh, I did a uh, another call out for um, listener or follower questions and at jrock33 judd J U D D um sent me a DM with some really cool questions I really enjoyed. Um if you want to do the same thing, feel free to DM me or whisper me on Twitter or Twitch, whatever you wish. Um and ask me some questions that you want me to discuss on the podcast or whatever. So uh Judd here has three questions. The first one being Julian Garrity mentioned a meaty forty hour story campaign. What would be an ideal length to you? Um, so for me, it's um, when it comes to, uh, it's not about the length; it's about the girth of the story. <laughs> uh, for me, it's 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 a matter of forty hours is great. Forty hours, you know, for me, I'm I'm thirty years old, so I've been playing games for a little while, and it's so funny for me to think back to like high school and college, and um, I worked at GameStop in college, and it was it was so common for people to be like, well, that that Call of Duty only has a fifteen hour story. I don't like I don't multi I don't like multiplayer, so that's a waste of, of a game for me. Talking about a forty hour story, um, you know, you were talking about like Fallout and stuff, Fallout Three, and saying like, man, I can play a hundred hours of single player in that game. I look now at my time tracker for the division. I, I'm pushing for four thousand hours, um, but you know, only a small amount of that has been based on the single player campaign that I've ran through a few times. I would say 30 to 40 hours would be amazing if it's truly that much time of leveling up your character and playing through the story of division two before you get to the end game activities, the raids, the incursions, the heroics, the legendaries, the missions, the side missions, the DZ, the side modes. If, if it's 40 hours of gameplay before that, that'd be incredible. That'd be great. Um, so I think that's fine. If if that's what they're already shooting for a, a meaty 40 hours, um, that's insane. That's twice as much as I'd honestly expect. Um, and then if that it still includes, which I believe they've talked about doing all the intel pickups and all that stuff, and then the storytelling and in the world itself, I mean, there's just that's awesome. So I haven't seen that quote, but if that's a thing, I think that's great. His next question is: Do you think any of the factions in the Division Two? Will be completely quote unquote bad or do you think they would be similar to the first um for example good intentions gone wrong um i think it's almost imperative i think it's extremely important um for a game to not just have purely bad characters um or purely you know pure evil that that to me in the real world there's so few situations that are clearly black and white at least in my opinion um, and when I see that in games as well, I love it. I, I love their not being clear moral high grounds. Um, so even like the factions in the Division 1, the cleaners, in theory, some people would argue, have the right idea. that they're They're trying to stop the spread of the disease. The methods by which they do it, I think are pretty easy to say, have gone too far. And their ideology has gone a bit far. But their actual goal is good, you could argue. Their execution, maybe not. The rioters, if you go through enough of the intel, the rioters are just normal people trying to survive. And, they, and they're doing it in a pack mentality with other people like them. Again, raping and pillaging your fellow citizens, awful. But their intent, at least understandable, in my opinion. Their goal... I think this is the same one most of us would have in these situations. The Rikers, I would say, are the closest thing we have to a quote-unquote bad guys. But honestly, even some of the intel paints some of them. Even if you um, if you ever sneak up on a group of Rikers, um, especially down in the southeast part of the map, and, and, and don't engage them, just listen. Um, you'll hear them. They'll talk about their wives and their kids stuff like that they'll also see some really awful shit but um i highly encourage people when they're playing the division one to occasionally get up on a group of enemies and not engage them hide from them and just listen 
there's a lot of voice acting that was done and them telling stories and them talking about things that um, humanizes the, those groups a lot. And it's, it's really interesting. It's a part of the game. I, I suspect some people have never heard before, um, but, but it's, it's, there's a lot more depth there than I think you may imagine. Then the LMB, uh, the LMB is just a private military group like Blackwater in the United States that it's probably a bunch of, well, it is. If you listen to the Intel, it's a bunch of former military guys that were sent there originally to just protect wall street. And then shit hit the fan and Bliss, the smart, charismatic dude that figured he could, one, protect himself, and two, take advantage of the situation. He's only human. They wanted to make a bunch of money off of this situation while they could. Again, not pure intentions, but not purely bad either. Uh, they were just the best and the best equipped, and they tended to handle things the best as they could. They, they kind of seemed like they thought they were doing the job that, that no one else was doing. So, um, I really hope that the factions in Division 2 have a similar thing. The True Sons that we've already seen show hints of that. They're former JTF, or former, they're mercenaries led by a former JTF. I suspect that their actual ranks will be a mix um, a former actual JTF, former military, militia men, stuff like that. We'll have to see. And I, and I hope that they are like the base... Um, faction that we go against, and that... You know, three or four more factions above them are even more complicated. Even the hunters, I think we're going to find, aren't quote unquote bad guys if they're in Division 2. I think we're going to find that the hunters are there just doing a job like we are. So we'll have to see, though. It's a great question. The last question for survival if they remake it from scratch, what two mechanics would you want left in it, and what two would you like to see them get rid of? Only two of each. Should have thought about this one a little more before I put it on here but the two mechanics i'd like to see kept i would like to see um ha, ha, starting with nothing kept and i would like to see like no ultimates or no super super high level gear um those two mechanics would be huge for me um and two to be left out this will be controversial but i would say the cold mechanic being the driving force um, I would like to see that be replaced by something else. And um, the ability for m uh, multiple <sighs> PVE survival being left out. That's a mechanic I would like to see left out. Um, because I think that if they just make it survival, not PVE or PVP, just survival, and you go in knowing that currently you can go into a PVP survival match and never see anyone. Now, you can seek people out. And get pvp if you want but you can easily in my opinion avoid pvp in that version of survival right now um and i really think that that it's a good way to introduce um that stuff to people and it keeps that element of danger i really hope that survival does come back and it seems like it's going to in some capacity i hope that they do intertwine a few battle royale mechanics but i really hope they trust in that what I've felt for a long time that the division has the best BR in the game and it's not even BR it's survival. Um, but I think it could use some updates, some hints, some, some, uh, inspiration. Again, J rock 33 Judd, thank you so much for those questions. Those are excellent. If anyone else wants to ask questions, tweet me, DM me, whisper me, get at me on Instagram. I don't care. However you want to, um, give me questions. I'll be more than happy to talk about them on the podcast. To wrap things up, um, be sure to check out my uh, the the home of the Echo Cast uh, on Twitter. It's the Division Game Two Hub. Um, that is a is a, an account I specifically have just for Division Two stuff. Um, be sure to check out my giveaway for the Division Two print. You should see that plastered everywhere. But I'll tell you one more time. I really appreciate everyone who listens to this podcast. I've really enjoyed doing it. Um, it it's going to evolve as time goes on. Maybe we'll introduce other people. Maybe we'll have guests. Uh, and maybe we'll just be listening to me rant and ramble and summarize the week. It's going to be a, a changing beast, and, and I'm really hoping that you all are willing to go through it with me. If you want to find me, I'm on Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch as Bond Diesel. I'm on Instagram as Bondiesel underscore Twitch. 
I want to thank UTB Doug for being my loyal patron. And you can find me on Patreon if you want to support the things I'm doing through that. I want to thank everyone. You guys are the best. This was Bond Diesel. And until next time.